Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, seminar. And today I'm going to talk about uh, how to use a recurrent neural network to uh, to predict the stock price. And I, I can see that uh, uh, a lot of people are interested in uh, stock prediction and I should say that uh, stock prediction is very challenging, and it is really hard to uh, to 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 train a model uh, that is uh, you know, you can make a profit of it. So it's really hard, and I think today um, the focus is um, RNN. And I, and I, I hope that after this uh, tutorial, uh, you can uh, apply uh, RN to solve uh, uh, other problem other than uh, stock prediction, uh, like uh, you know, translation and other language application. As long as uh, the data itself has the, uh, uh, the, the 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 nature of sequence. And also at the end of the the seminar, uh, uh, I want to give some um, discussion for those people who are really uh, interested in stock prediction, want to continue, uh, you know, to develop something. Uh, I will give some, uh, uh, you know, resources and share my view of some uh, of uh, of some previous works. So uh, that so after the, the seminar, uh, I hope I can leave uh, like a five to ten minutes for questions. So here you can see uh, you can download the code and the data uh, from this uh, uh, location, uh, this URL, and um, uh, you can play with the code and the data after the the seminar. Okay. So uh, we actually have a very limited time, uh, just uh, an hour. So uh, the plan for these tutorials like this is uh, the first part uh, we are going to introduce some uh, the, 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 the fundamental, uh, you know, what is RNN. Uh, the, the, and secondly, we want to do hands-on. We, uh, you know, go through the, the, the example. Basically, we use the SNP 500 data uh, to do the test. So I will show step-by-step uh, uh, -step how to, you know, uh, collect data, reformat it, and then feed in uh, how to build uh, the, 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 the architecture, uh, which is uh, a long short term memory, uh, which is a special type of RNN. So, uh, so that's the plan. So let's get started. Uh, okay, here is some uh, uh, documentation that I use to, um, to to create this seminar. And uh, you know, uh, first one is the TensorFlow uh, documentation, and secondly. This is a blog by Christopher Ola, which is uh, highly, uh, you know, uh, recommended. Uh, it's pretty good for for, for a new user to understand the, the the basic concept. And I copy a lot of uh, diagrams from uh, his blog. And another one is uh, the blog from Lilian Wong, and uh, basically my my code is actually uh, uh, comes from her version, and I made some uh, cleanup and remove all the irrelevant part, only leave the 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 the, the bone part uh, there. And uh, another is there's a article published by Thomas and Christopher which uh, addressing how to use a long short term memory network for prediction it's a very interesting uh, article i if i have time at the end I, I i will talk about this a little bit more all right so let's get started with the rn you know recurrent neural network is just one uh, type of uh, you know neural network uh, it, it has, unlike the conventional neural network, uh, it has a loop in it. Basically, uh, for example, at time t, you feed in the neural network with input, which is uh, xt, 
it generate uh, uh, up to uh, HT. The same time, uh, it has some other uh, information like uh, internal state that goes uh, goes uh, goes into uh, as a uh, you know in as a loop as an input for the next step. So next step is x t plus one will take the state from the previous uh, state as the input to, 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 to do the calculation. So this one, you know, once we have a neural network, it's hard to do the uh, optimization. But uh, unfortunately, you will find that we can convert it to traditional one, which is we unroll the, 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 the recurrent neural network, have a version like the one on the right, the unrolled version, you can see, it's just like the traditional uh, uh, neural network. It, uh, it doesn't have any loop in it, but it performed uh, the, basically the same uh, idea. So here we have a copy of uh, the, the, pro, the, the cell, uh, multiple copy of it. And for uh, at the time step zero, we feed in the input x zero and we got an output. Together, we have another, for example, internal state or something, sometimes include the output, we feed into the next step. So the next step take not only the input x1, but also some input from previous state as input, and we generate. So we do it so on and so forth. So this is an unrolled version. And today I'm going to talk about long short-term memory net neural network, which is a special type of uh, recurrent neural network. Uh, the reason is that LSTM is very, very popular and very, very successful in um, application like uh, translation, you know, also like uh, speech recognition and, um, you know, uh, language modeling and, uh, and many other applications. As long as the, uh, the, the data itself has the nature of a sequence, for example, uh, in language modeling, you have an article, you know, you, you have words one by one. It forms a sequence of words. So in terms of translation, for example, translate English article to French, uh, you basically, uh, you know, you uh, do a sequence to sequence uh, uh, translation. Uh, so that's something uh, that LSTM really good at. It's capable to remember something uh, in the long term. So uh, let's take a closer look of uh, the structure. If we uh, zoom in the internal structure like this, one of the uh, cell, you can see there's a lot of gates. There's the uh, sigma uh, gates. There's the uh, punch gate. The sigma gates, we usually refer it as uh, a gate to control, uh, like, uh, the control the, 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 the flow, uh, whether how much we, we are going to allow it to go through. So here I, uh, you can see the, uh, um, this one, as I, I, my pointer uh, circled, is called the internal state. The internal state from a previous stage, from then uh, that feed in as input. And also another one input is the output. You see the line here from previous, uh, the, the input from previous state feed into the current uh, time step as well, in addition to the input at, the, uh, at, the, at time t. Okay, so sigmoid. Uh, most people uh, are familiar with it. It actually output uh, a, a value between zero and one. One means allow the, the data pass through completely. Zero means uh, don't allow anything to pass through. And anything between, you know, you allow, uh, like for example, is 0 0.7, that means I allow 70% of the information pass through. So that takes just one step. Uh, let's take a 
look of the next step. We just take one of the sigmoid because there's some several sigmoid gates, and we just take a closer look of one of them. You can see that we concatenate the input xt with the output from previous uh, time step, which is ht. Uh, we concatenate it together, and then uh, we um, multiply, uh, you know, by our weight plus by us, and that gives us a, another vector to fit into the sigmoid. So probably people at this point are, are kind of confused because normally you understand sigmoid take a scalar uh, variable and produce a scalar uh, variable that range, that ranges from zero to one. Why here is a vector takes a vector? So basically here it does a, a, a element wise uh, sigmoid. Okay, so if uh, uh, for example, if the the the, the because the the the, the 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 expression in the parentheses is a vector, eventually, suppose it uh, it is a vector of uh, length ten, so we do a sigmoid ten times and generate a, a ft, which is also a vector of uh, of length ten. So we do something like this, and let's go back. So basically, uh, the, the information flow is like this. The internal state pass through, and here we do uh, uh, multiply with the, uh, the gates, a uh, sigmoid gate, which control how much uh, of the states from previous stage will, will allow to pass through, okay, that here. And another one is that we generate an internal state based on xt and the output from previous state, which ht minus one can kind of get together, we, we do, do a tangent. Do a tangent, we also control how much we will allow newly calculated internal state to pass through here. So once we determine how much the new state pass through, plus the, the one that left over pro from previous stage, we merge them together by, by plus. But all these uh, uh, plus and the multiplication are point-wise operations. So that means uh, if we have a, a vector, it's element-wise operation, okay? And we do the same thing, similar to do the uh, for the uh, for the output. So here we generate the output uh, from the internal state by using tank uh, uh, function. Tank uh, generate the difference with tank uh, actually uh, generate a, a variable between minus one and one. So sigma sigma they generate a, a value between zero and one. So that's the difference. We also control sigma, use sigma gate to control how much of the new output, and then this is the output. So that's the um, the idea. So why is it so? Uh, uh, it can achieve uh, the, uh, the, the 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 idea to to remembering uh, information. You can see. The internal state gets passed along, and based on the uh, sigmoid uh, we learned, we can learn what information, how much it can, uh, uh, we want to keep it to pass along to subsequent uh, process. So this one actually is a way to remember the uh, uh, the, the information. So, so basic. The, the the idea is uh, why we need to do remembering uh, uh, something uh, in language. It's very clear. For example, if uh, the application is to predict uh, uh, the next words, uh, you 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 can base the, the, the current. Uh, Sometimes you can based on the current uh, uh, sentence. On for example, the uh, the clouds are in the, you know, the next word is sky. 
And but sometimes you you, you have to uh, you have to get get a conclusion based on uh, some information far back in the article. So you need uh, some kind of long term memory. In stock prediction, it's also very clear that you cannot make a very accurate prediction just based on, if, for example, you, pre you want to predict the, the, the tomorrow's uh, uh, stock price based on today's. It will make more sense you based on some history like uh, last 10 day, last 30 day, maybe last uh, like a a hundred day something, so uh, so that w will give you more reliable uh, prediction. Okay, so you want to have a new network to remember, you know, what happened in the past, which may have some kind of impact on the on the the, the, uh, the future occurrence of certain events or certain value. So that's the idea. Okay, so we covered this. One thing that I want to point out is the XT. XT is the input at the timestamp T. It, it is not a scalar. It is a vector. So in our, uh, in, uh, in the example that I'm going to talk about next is, uh, you know, X could be just a, a scalar. Like, so I just take the close, uh, closing price. But in general, it's a vector, so which contains a open, close, a high and low, maybe volume as well. So it's a vector. So that means at any point we take into account multiple features or multiple attributes. So that is something that I want to uh, to, to to point out. All right. So now. We basically have the uh, you know the concept of uh, what uh, uh, RNA is and how uh, the long short term memory uh, works. Uh, now, once we want to implement, uh, fortunately uh, we don't need to write every code because right now there's uh, you know a pre-built library like a TensorFlow, Theano, or something like that. You can just use those APIs, uh, and it is very convenient. But I find sometimes it's very uh, confusing for beginners to you know to use those functions because the uh, the, the parameters, uh, the name, what does it mean? What does it mean? It's very confusing. I just point out something that why is the number of units in the uh, LSTM cell, uh, which is um, um, TensorFlow uh, class? Uh, it's very confusing to me uh, at, at the very beginning, but uh, I searched on the internet. I found some uh, a lot of blogs talking about it. Uh, not very clear, but uh, finally I figured out, and uh, I, I think it, uh, the, the documentation um, um, doesn't uh, make it very clear, and um, so I'm going to talk about this. Here. So I so leave the number of units. Uh, let's first talk about the number of steps. Number of steps is the the unroll version. For example, in our application, we want to. Uh, to determine because the data we use is daily, not an every minute daily uh, data, and we want to know how uh, how long history we want to uh, look back to make a prediction. So here we have to decide it. For example, we want to use the uh, last of uh, thirty days. So then the number of steps is thirty. So it's number of uh, uh, repeats in the unrolled version, so how it's the length, so how many of the of the input length from the second one is the, the input size. As I said, xt is a vector, so uh, input size is the length of uh, xt. For example, in our application, I probably I, at the most I use two. One is closing price, the other is the volume. So that is uh, the input size is two. If I just use one of them, uh, the entire uh, input size is one. Okay, so just make clear. 
let's go back to the uh, number of units <laughs> because it has some other name uh, people also refer it as uh, the uh, size of uh, LSTM cell and also some people say, what is, is it? It says the it's the output size which is the HT HT uh, how uh, what's the length of HT all right they both both of them are correct but uh, probably at this point it's harder for you to understand what, what what still you don't want to know what it is like I said it's all here you know I, what I do is first I concatenate the output from previous stage with current input and then we multiply uh, with a, a, a matrix. Uh, then we can change the size. For example, here suppose the uh, the uh, number of units is ten, and the input size is five. So you can see HT is ten. This is five. Together we have uh, the the concatenated vector is uh, is length of uh, fifteen. And we do a multiplication, make 10 by 15. So after the multiplication, we still get a, a vector of 10, length of 10. So the number of 10 is actually the number of units. It's not the number of, uh, you know, is not the number of uh, repeats in the unrolled version. So that's something that uh, always confused me uh, at the first glance. So uh, so this is something that you, uh, you, you once we know this, uh, the next part is uh, a little bit easier. Uh, let's move on to the code. Uh, before we go into the code, we just uh, summarize it. We have three uh, Python file, man is the man program. Load data, basically uh, read the CSV uh, file and uh, reformat it. And then uh, this one uh, is actually build up the uh, uh, long short term uh, memory net neural network and do the training. So the data is uh, downloaded from Yahoo. You can download it by yourself. After training, I saved uh, every. Uh, um, I think every 50 or something, I save a model in a folder called a model. So uh, let's look at, before we look at the code, let's look at the three uh, uh, TensorFlow uh, APIs. One is called uh, LSTM cell. Basically, you specify how many uh, units inside or the size of the uh, LSTM cell. So uh, you ha you have to specify that. I think I give a value like 128 or something, but later on I check if I reduce that to 50, it doesn't seem to uh, uh, influence the, the, the performance uh, very much. And secondly, uh, this one just create a cell, okay? Secondly, I use uh, a drop up right I drop the previous one. Drop have uh, has the uh, uh, ability to prevent, uh, not prevent, at least reduce uh, the, the chance to have uh, overfitting. And lastly, you call this function feeding the cell you construct previously, and to 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 have a, a to construct the recurrent neural network based on the cell defined previously, and also the input. The input actually gives you uh, gives the uh, function the information like uh, uh, how much uh, how how many uh, input per per time step and how uh, how many uh, time steps you are going to create. So now let's take a quick look of the architecture we are, we are going to implement. We have a RNN in the bottom part, and then. At the, the last stage, we generate our output HT, or I think HT, the, here the T is probably like, a, I think the, I use 50. And you remember, this output uh, has the uh, length of, uh, you know, unit size is not a, a, a scalar, it's a, a vector. Suppose 10, 
We feed into the 10 other uh, fully connected neural network and they generate the, uh, the output. The output or the target is the next day price. I, I mean, next day closing price is the target. So here's just a very simple uh, structure. And uh, of course, it doesn't do a very good job. It's understandable. And I hope this serves as a, a starting point. A few things that I'm going to mention that uh, because here I load into the data uh, is uh, SNP 500 data, and the, the, you have you, you know that if you look at the the, the, the chart of SNP 500, it's basically uh, uh, increasing in in general from uh, like, let's say 1950 to uh, this year. Uh, although there is some variation uh, somewhere, but uh, in general it's uh, going up. So there's a, uh, you have to uh, do the price normalization, otherwise it won't make any sense. So I use uh, this normalization, which is a, a kind of like a return to, as a, as a um, you know, um, normalization. So, that, so the scale uh, won't matter anymore, okay? And that I split it into training and evaluation. So I already, uh, uh, start a uh, interactive session, and I reserve uh, an hour and uh, ten minutes. Hopefully, it's sufficient for this talk. So uh, here we are. So uh, let's see the uh, uh, we ha we are here. The data is in the date directory, and you can uh, take. Let's take a quick look of it. So basically. It's, it's the date, you, you see it's a daily data is a third, uh, uh, third, fourth, fifth, and then it's open, uh, high, low, close, adjust, uh, close, uh, and uh, volume, something like that. So there's a lot of data from uh, uh, the uh, 15, 1950 uh, to, I think, to some day ago, I downloaded probably 20 days ago, I'm not so sure. So that's the data. So before uh, we need to do something to make, first I, I need to load those things. So uh, I load uh, CUDA, CUDIAN, and the Python uh, uh, stack. And secondly, uh, I need to, uh, uh, you know, Activate my version of uh, TensorFlow. Go there, and oh, sorry, Let's take a look. Yes, oh, we are there. Everything looks good. Um, okay, so now uh, I'm going to run a test. I here I just copy paste. Uh, if I if you want to do a, a you know submit a job, you just as sub this uh, this is a job description. But uh, here I just uh, do it interactively. So let's do it. I'm not sure. It's already taken. All right. So it's going. It's moving on and print out some information. Okay. So I'm going to stop here because uh, it's doing. And this is something that I just stop it. So now I'm, let's take a quick look of the code. The code, like I said, first take a quick look of man. Uh, the, the, the front part is about flag because as, as you see, uh, the, the program can take a lot of uh, arguments like uh, dash dash uh, input size, dash dash uh, number of, uh, of steps. If you don't spec them, they take a default value, like those, okay? And, but you can specify a different thing. So these flag things are, are very nice that uh, TensorFlow provided. So uh, you just specify in that format, it will handle it uh, for you. In the main program, oh, sorry, from here, I first I just print out the flags, and uh, it's not, doesn't do very, uh, and create, uh, 
a configuration, I, I enable uh, GPU, that's all, not, not very fancy. So for TensorFlow, the first thing you need to create a session. Within a session, you can run your, uh, uh, you know, pre-build, uh, your, your, your architecture, neural network architecture. So here, in above, uh, like I said, I have two other Python function. One is handle uh, data loading, and from there I load a uh, stock the data set. The other handle uh, RNN, uh, not RNN, uh, I just load uh, import it. So uh, we will take a closer look of those two as well after looking the. So basically, once we have a session, we create the model. Okay. Then we load the data. You know, this one will load the data, and we specify uh, uh, how much we want to split the data because we want to split it into two sets: one is for training, the other for evaluation. So here, zero point three means we want to keep a thirty percent as a evaluation set, the other seventy uh, as a training. Okay. So then we are going to, uh, you know, do the training. Basically, just one statement, do the training, and feed in the, the, the data, which is the stock list. Here, we don't have much stock, just one, uh, which is SNP uh, index, OK? So that's all. Pretty much that's it. And I hope you, uh, because uh, uh, here, uh, bec uh, because we have a limited time, I cannot go very detailed. I hope uh, I just give you some, uh, mention some basic structure of this. So later on, it will, it, it will be uh, easier for you to, uh, to go through the, uh, the source code. So let's first look at the data input. So here we have a, a, called a stock data set class, and we basically here based on we pass in in the creation we pass into the stock uh, symbol which is SNP 500, and we just do load it in and uh, and blah 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 probably. If, uh, those details I, I won't go through, but finally it created a. Uh, uh, training two set training x testing x training y test y. So for the training x, it's a uh, very long samples, a lot of samples. Each sample contains of uh, let's say uh, fifty uh, uh, fifty days of close, and the 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 corresponding training y. Uh, the element you need is the target, which is the next day closing price. So the same thing. And there's one thing here. I, uh, I For the testing, I just get the whole thing. But for the training, which is very big, I need to divide it into batches. So, uh, uh, so that's why I write another called generate one uh, epoch, which uh, every time I call it, it gives me next one next uh, batch. So uh, if you look at the detail, it's here. Uh, we don't have time to, to take a closer look. Uh, let's focus on the, the second one. So this one, we also define as a, a class. In the creation, so-called construction, we don't do much. Basically, we just assign those, you know, we keep our copy uh, as a number function. Then we, in the constructor, we call build graph. This is the main function that build the architecture. So basically, inside we, I mentioned, we have a learning rate, and uh, the, this is for a dropout. The, how much? Uh, what's the percentage we want to keep a connection in the dropout? And uh, the input, the target. And we define those as placeholder. And finally, we this is an internal function. Let's call it later. We create a one cell. But if we want to create a multiple cell, which actually form a multiple layer, we do this. We actually um, call this uh, to create multiple layer. But uh, but since we don't. 
uh, we really, well, I don't think it makes uh, too much sense to create multiple sets. So number of layer always uh, one in our case. So let's look at uh, how to create one cell. So like we said, we first use this function, uh, this uh, TensorFlow function to create a cell. What we need to do is to, uh, you know, to specify how large uh, is the cell in terms of number of units. And then we wrap it up. You know, once we have this cell, we pass into it we, to the wrapper, drop out the wrapper. We have a wrapper uh, uh, with uh, the drop out layer. And then, in this case, this is the cell. And once we have this here, we need to uh, pass this cell into this so-called dynamic RNN as uh, the first argument. Then the input, which contains the information of the number of steps and the size of input. So uh, the cell just specifies the cell itself that we just created in previous step, okay? So this one is constructed uh, uh, like an unrolled version of uh, RNN which is, uh, in our case, is a long short-term memory uh, neural network. And after that, it returns of uh, the output and the internal state. We basically throw, throw away the internal state, only use the, the, the output. And also, remember, the val is the output of uh, at every step. If we have a 50 time step, that means uh, we have 50 of them. But we don't want to use all of them. We want to use the output from the last one, like uh, this paragraph. We want to use the last one. So what we will do is uh, we um, we first need to get the last one. But before we get the last one, because the output the val is in the order, is uh, the shape of it is. Uh, batch size, number of uh, step, and uh, this one. So we need to transpo transpose it to make the order is the uh, number of steps, batch, and this one. So after that, we transpose it. So the, 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 the first index is number of steps. So once we have that, we get the first index minus one is the last one, and we do a slicing, use the gather function, we just get the last one. So once we have the last one, we create a weight and a bias. Uh, you just multiply uh, your last one with the uh, matrix and plus the bias. That gives you the prediction, OK? Once we have a prediction, we can do a lot of things. First, we measure the loss. So we measure what's the difference between what our prediction with the real target, okay, the difference. And then we do the mean square error. So we square it and calculate the mean. And this is, we want this loss to be as small as possible. So we run a optimizer. We use the RMSP, uh, RMSP prop optimizer, which is, uh, is supposed to be, uh, uh, or is considered to be better than, you know, the general uh, gradient descent. And we need to give a learning rate, and, we, uh, and also the target, one, what we want to minimize, which is what we defined in previous uh, sentence. We want to minimize this one. This is our goal to, to make it as small as possible. I also create this one for checking the performance. And basically, you check whether or not our prediction has the same, or in, uh, same uh, direction with the, the, the target. For example, if we, they, they greater than zero, that means uh, they both, uh, if I predict is going up tomorrow, it does go up. If I predict it's going down, it does go down. So that will give you, a, when we multiply them together, it will give them a, a, a greater than zero value. We want to count how many of those. We, this, uh, this is a, a Boolean operation. We cast it to a float. 
So that means uh, the uh, true uh, will be cast into one, uh, false will cut to zero, and then we calculate the mean. So that will give our accuracy. At this point, we haven't uh, run any training yet. We just construct the uh, neural network, connect the, the input and output. Uh, input is a placeholder. So uh, and for the loss, we do define similarly. Next, let's look at the training function. First, get the testing uh, data. And once we feed the test feed, we will specify those. For testing, the learning rate is zero because we don't want any learn. The keep, the, for the dropout, we keep every connection. So it's 100%, so it's one. And those, and for training, uh, for each training, is different. So this is the chain feed. Each time we feed a batch of X and Y, and this is a keep like 70% uh, or, or 0.7. Learning rate is like a 0, 0, 0, 0.001 or something. So that's uh, that's just something we just go through the loop. Each time we feed in different uh, uh, batch, uh, that's something that we do before. You know, we iterate the, this one. We use a generator one uh, effort. Uh, uh, give a batch, so that's what we do. All right, so that's the uh, function. Uh, let's look at the uh, running again. Um, because uh, we don't have, okay, probably I, 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 I want to change something uh, just uh, to make it clear, interesting. Okay, so so okay here. So here you see that uh, for every fifty iteration, I run a test. You see, I run a test, and I print out some information. What's the current uh, the training error, testing error, and what's the prediction rate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to do it every step. So what I will do is if here, I just make it a two. Uh, I come out after the rest, okay? All right, so take, I'm just going to run this one. Oh. Okay. Just let it run a little bit. Okay, I can probably I stop here. I just want to point out something. Let's go back to see the output because it's every uh, iteration is very dense. Usually we don't do this. So you see the arrow is. The arrow, uh, mean square arrow on the training set is uh, is this, the first step. On the testing set is this. When the prediction rate is, you know, it's a little bit over, uh, you know, half. So it's better than probably a uh, uh, random guess. And then as it goes on, you see the training arrow goes down and the test arrow goes down as well, you see. And now it's going to like this one. So you can zero, here is zero, 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 zero for testing three zeros after the, the decimal point. The, the, the starting point is like uh, two or one, you know, so it's, it does do the job. But the, the, the prediction isn't very great at all. So I here I run, uh, this is the result that I ran previously. The output is every 50 instead of every step. So you see that uh, here you can see the arrow is very, very, very low. After 50 iteration, after 100 iteration, it's very, very low. But the correction rate, uh, I mean, based on the, the direction, is not great at all although the arrow is, uh, is lower. 
So how to explain this is uh, because our target is to reduce the uh, the arrow between uh, our prediction and the true target, which is also is based on the uh, return rate. We actually predict the return rate instead of the absolute uh, uh, closing price of the next day. So that uh, you know is our target. So it may not favor the the direction rate. So that's something I, I want to uh, point out. It's certainly not great at all because it's far from usable. But uh, like I said, this is just a first step. So let's go to uh, a conclusion here. Uh, I want to point out something here. Uh, there is a, a theory called a random uh, walk. Probably you, uh, everybody uh, know that. It comes from the uh, efficient market uh, uh, assumption. But, uh, I, uh, but uh, right now, you have to assume that uh, the, the market is not 100% uh, efficient. So there's still some room for, for us to find some patterns that we can make a profit from the stock market. So let's uh, look at one of the publications that I found recently. It's very interesting. Uh, let's look at this one. Uh, I think this one, okay. So this article actually published, uh, I think this year, right? Uh, this year, 2018, it's a very new article. It uses a long short-term memory as we do for financial market data prediction. And I just want to go through the sum of the results uh, instead of, uh, you know, the author actually uh, compared a three, a four uh, method. One is the uh, long short term memory. The second one is the random forest. The third one is the uh, uh, deep neural network. The last one is the traditional logistic regression. They rank the stock for the next day based on their possible going up and down. And then they choose the top K and the bottom K. So for example, the first column is they choose the top 10 stock to long. And also they choose the bottom 10 to short. And what they get is on average, they got a daily return for the short term, long short term memory is 0.46%. It's amazing because this is daily. And if we convert that to annual returns like 215 something percent, it's very, very amazing. So then I went, oh, we got such a good result. How how could be true? It's too good to be true, okay? So I wonder why. So then let's look at it. why it's so good. And then, so basically they tested from uh, 1991 to today, well, not today, to 2015, okay? When they apply, so here they plot only the, uh, uh, the long short term memory versus uh, random forest. So you see the accumulate uh, uh, profit from uh, 1993 to 2000, both methods are very good. It's quite, uh, you, you know, monotonically increasing. And uh, from uh, 2001 to 2009, uh, still not too bad, it's quite good, uh, except uh, 2008 is a special year when they have, uh, you know, a, a financial crisis there. So at that time, Random for it uh, beats uh, the uh, long shot, long short term memory neural network. But after that, you see, uh, it's, uh, it's the case changes. So how to, to explain this? Uh, the author assume uh, the conclude that because after 2010. Neural network, especially, uh, you know, like uh, the advanced one, like uh, recurrent neural network has uh, has been heavily used in stock uh, uh, prediction. And so they already, so once they widely used, uh, the room for, for, for the profit is, you know, is, is eaten up. 
So you don't, you won't get any, uh, you know. So from now on, if you want to to still make some profit from the market, you have to find some more advanced things that other people haven't found it yet. So that's something that I leave you guys to invest. At least this proof that the market is not, uh, you know, a hundred percent efficient. Although it it becomes more and more efficient, efficient, and it's hard to find, you know, winning patterns uh, or hidden winning patterns for for you to uh, figure out. But uh, I think there's still room. And uh, for those who want to do serious work, you can go to Kaggle. Uh, there's uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, machine learning, uh, deep learning competition. So far, there's one we call the uh, Sigma. Uh, they uh, uh, sponsored a, a competition and, um, for participants to, uh, to win prize. And you can join, and uh, they provide the, the, the both the uh, market data and the news data. So they are they hope everyone uh, join in and to make use of those data to make a better prediction. So you can use uh, you know what we learned today. Of, uh, and uh, I, I think I just applied it. I can get like uh, the scoreboard not very high, but uh, uh, it makes sense for very simple, uh, you know, new network like this. I just I didn't use all the all the information. Very simple. I use not. I I, I think only use uh, you know ten days uh, backwards return or something. I got like zero point fifty five or something on the scoreboard. Uh, that's the score. Uh, I think it's still very uh, on the lower part of the school leading board, but uh, that's my first step. But if you want, you can go there. Another one is a Quantopian. Also, you can, if you have a talent, you want to go, uh, you know, to pursue the deep, uh, using machine learning for stock prediction, you can go there as well. But unfortunately, as far as I know, I, uh, I'm not so sure it's true uh, now. Uh, they don't support a TensorFlow or some other deep learning uh, library. Uh, this, uh, I think they support a site, uh, psychic learn plus something else. So, uh, but uh, uh, of course you can check if they uh, make a TensorFlow, uh, they support it or, or not. So something like that you can check out if you're serious about uh, you know using uh, deep learning for stock prediction. You can go to those two uh, uh, websites to take part in.